Even though we're still in the month of February, the last week has looked and felt more like the spring season, and some of you already seeing some signs of spring, including this weather that has ranged from record warmth to a number of sunny days and several days with high temperatures up in the 60s. In this week's Climate Friday newsletter, we're going to talk about the impacts of this early spring warmth on the ecosystem, including the effect that it has on plants and animals, and we'll talk about how our recent stretch of mild weather may be affecting ecosystems across the region. Let's start off with a few photos. I've gotten a number of viewer reports of some early blooming that has occurred in the last week or so. These sites that you see here typically more characteristic of the month of March, yet here we are in mid February. You're already starting to see some daffodil blooms here in this photo. I've gotten a number of photos seeing the early blooming already occurring very early on in the season, and that's not your imagination. These are already a couple inches tall looking at those blooms coming out of the ground. Essentially, the mild weather has tricked them into thinking it is already early spring. Another photo shows you an early bloom, and this is a site that has become all too familiar in the last couple of weeks with our early season warmth. To give you an idea of just how mild it's been, before we discuss the impacts, I want to recap the last few weeks of February weather. So far, we've had over six days that are in the 50s this month, and that puts our entirely monthly average at a whopping six degrees above average. Mind you, this is following an incredibly mild January, and we're following that up with a warm February. We've hit 62 degrees twice so far this month, and it's possible we'll reach the 60s once again. February 9th and 15th, those share the title for the warmest day of the month, both of which bring in high temperatures up into the 60s. To give you an idea of this last week in particular, just how unusually warm it's been, looking at Wednesday, we hit the 60s. Tuesday, Monday, and Sunday, we had three days in a row all very similar looking and feeling. They all featured high temperatures that were up in the mid 50s as well as mainly sunny skies. And of course, you have to go back to Saturday to even find a day that was a little bit cooler than that. And this is following a January that was exceptionally mild. So what does a normal February have in store? Well, needless to say, the last week or so has not been a normal one. A typical February is actually the second snowiest month of the year. It brings us 10.2 inches of snow and fall just shy of January. That is our snowiest month of the year, whereas February takes the spot at number two. Our average temperature for the month of February is 30. We have been well above that with a number of 50, 60, even more than 60 degree days so far. Now, of course, January kicked off 2023 with exceptionally mild conditions. We ended up almost eight degrees warmer than normal, and that puts January as the seventh warmest on record in Toledo. And if you look at those overnight low temperatures, it ranks number four for the fourth warmest January that we have ever seen. So let's start to talk about some of the impacts of this mild weather and some of the effects that we may be feeling at home. Now across the southeastern United States, of course, this time of year is quite a bit warmer. Now folks down in Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, in this green region, they're already starting to see the onset of the spring bloom. Earlier than us, of course, due to the milder temperatures and closer proximity to the equator, but everyone in green down there is already seeing blooming, flowering, full signs of spring in mid February. Now the blue shade out in the southwest that actually shows you a later than normal onset of some spring conditions. And the reason the Midwest isn't highlighted is because it is only mid February. After all, we're a little bit later than it is down south due to the differences in weather and climate. But across a good portion of the southeastern contiguous United States, this is the earliest spring onset of record for parts of the southeast. And that includes locations like Mississippi, Alabama, over towards Georgia and the Carolinas where they are seeing full-fledged signs of spring. Now, how does climate change play a role in the onset of spring? Well, I want to talk about one study in particular that found just a one degree warming of temperatures causes the spring bloom to happen two days fully earlier. In other words, if you just get a one degree warming up, um, we see that spring bloom happen over two days earlier than it normally does. If we see a two degrees rise in temps, you can double that, meaning full four days earlier than usual. And of course, in the last decade alone, we've warmed up winter about two to three degrees, and that puts the spring bloom a full week earlier than it was just a decade ago. There's a number of impacts of this early spring bloom, and I'm sure you've seen those impacts as we saw through those 
viewer photos just a second ago. The warm winter weather is one of the biggest culprits for that early spring bloom. However, this throws the ecosystem out of whack. Pollinators are, are hardwired to do their job at a certain time of the year. You know, it's in their genetic code, essentially. However, due to the changes in the spring bloom, it's thrown them out of their loop. In other words, sometimes pollinators arrive to do their job and the spring bloom has already ended because it started so soon. This has an impact on butterflies like monarchs who lay their eggs on milkweed and due to the later um, due to the changes in the spring bloom that affects their reproductive patterns as well. Climate change overall making the bloom happen much earlier than it normally would. I want to also talk about a study that talks about just how much this has changed in the last few decades. Um, we look at plants that are flowering one month earlier than they used to due to climate change. As a whole, we are starting to see an earlier onset of spring flowering. Now there's data that goes way, way back. Of course, our weather sensors haven't been collecting data since then, but some studies do cite early botanists that report on when plants typically flower, and some of those go way back to the 1700s. The most affected plant group has been the herb family, which uh, flowers 32 full days earlier due to climate change. We're seeing that big difference in when plants flower. Now here at home, one of the plants and um, crops that has been affected by this the most has been the apple crop. And due to these warm temperatures that we've had in February, sometimes that leads to an early flowering of the apple crop. Now what that does is when it's followed by a hard freeze, that can kill off an entire apple crop. Now of course, the colder the temperatures get after they flower, the worse the impacts. If you just get a light freeze, say 31, 32, usually isn't that bad of an impact. But if you drop down to 24, 25 degrees after the apple trees are already flowering, that can totally wipe out an entire apple crop. And there are local orchards that have had to deal with that. Again, fruit trees are one of the most affected by these changes in our weather patterns, especially in the month of February, which is often a transitional month. Early flowering is one of the biggest impacts of that and followed by a hard freeze that can totally wipe out and ruin a fruit crop. Now, even though it has felt like spring lately, we still do have 30 days officially until the spring season begins. By that point, average high temperature is going to be 50 degrees. Whether you're tuning in on WTOL.com, on WTOL 11 Plus, or on YouTube, good to have you with us as we talk about some of these early signs of spring. Seems like spring is a long ways away, but the weather has awfully felt like it lately. You can check out more of our Climate Friday information at WTOL.com slash email, and I'll see you next Friday with the latest.